Hey guys, I thought I would do a video on parameters. Now, if you're relatively new or you've heard about them and you're having a lot of trouble with them, um, a lot of the times I think it's, well, in my experience anyway, I don't know what parameter means, right? <laughs> so when someone was trying to explain it, I'm like, so what does it do actually, right? So the, the best way I found out to really get the understanding of what it is, is really, it's just changing something on the fly. All right, so let's let's do a little test. Okay, so let's say I have category. Right, let's say I got category here. Uh, maybe something with more. Maybe subcategory, and I've got sales. Right, so I've just got my standard, um, my standard. What do you call it? Superstore data. Let's just clean this up a little bit because you know how I like to be a bit organized. Right, and let's say forget parameters for a second. I want to be like. I want to color anything greater than 200,000. I want to color a certain color. So how would you do it? Well, you've got a few options. One is you can just group them, right? Create a group or create a set. But the problem is, let's say I up update my data, I have to apply that again. So I don't want something like hard-coded or manually put in. I want something that is calculated based on the view. So I can do something like this. I can go create calculated field. Let's just clear that out. Let's call this... Um, sales test one right and i really just want to go uh the sum of sales and i want to do some sort of check so the easiest is just to go greater than something right so we said two hundred thousand dollars let's do greater than or equal to two hundred thousand great okay so now you can see it's t slash f basically true or false right condition if we grab that and put into color it puts a color on it great okay no problem, easy. But let's say I went to you, hey, listen, can you change that to, you know, 250,000? And you go, yes, sir, no worries, sir, I'll change that right away, sir. So you change it, and then the next day it's like, hey, listen, you know, I was having a bad day, you know, the missus made me clean the house, I was grumpy, let's switch that value back to 150. So you say, no worries, boss, okay, I'll switch it back, so now you've switched it to 150. And every time I ask you to change it, you have to come in here, you have to open the workbook, you have to go edit, you have to come in here, you go 150, right? Change it again, color changes again, and then I get you to do it again. Let's say I do it for two weeks straight. By the end of the two weeks, you're like, oh my God, I'm so over having to come in here, open this up and change it. So wouldn't it be nice if there was something in here that I can just type in 150,000 and it will change for me whenever I want. And to add to that, that filter or whatever it is we're going to add will also translate to when you publish it to Tableau online. So if you're a manager or whoever wants to change it, it doesn't have to come back to you. They can just type it in and change it. So how do we implement that? Well, we've got this formula here. So really we want to change this part into a parameter, right? So a variable, if you think back to, I guess, algebra and all that. So we're going to just right click anywhere. I'm going to go create and create a parameter okay and usually it looks like this right when you first open it up but i've been doing testing so what we're going to do is i want to just provide a value so let's start with the one we had before which is two hundred thousand, right we leave it as float so just a number um, and we just set this to all to default so basically you can type whatever in whatever value you want we're not setting any rules on what can be typed in so we go okay right and then what we do is we go into this formula right and instead of referencing 150,000 we can actually reference the parameter instead right so let's call this sales test one parameter so you can see this is now a formula rather than a fixed value in there we go okay and if I click on this sales test one parameter and I go show parameter you'll see that this filter has now appeared so I can now change it from here right 50,000 I can change it from here and whoever is viewing it as a user can just change it from here right so that's kind of a very basic um, application of parameters but you can get pretty creative with this right so I've done a few examples the first one is a color filter so let me get rid of the coloring first and show you what I got so basically if you plot every single city right maybe let's go state so we have less points right and we go sales in the size right i want to color this 
by some sort of value but I don't know what the value is so I want to give someone the option to type in whatever value they want so I've created this parameter similar to the one we had before which is just a twenty thousand um, dollar parameter value right that's the value it starts with so we go display format right and the only thing I've done here is just make it into a currency so there's a dollar symbol so no big deal okay and then what we want to use is another formula to use that parameter so sum of sales which is what we're visualizing here and then oops didn't mean to extend that and then the parameter to say you know this is what I want you to compare it to okay great so now we can bring this into color and there we go all right I got the color switch here I can go 25,000 let's say you'll see more or less dots starting to appear so again another application one thing actually I might add that I just thought of now is bins right so I'll just make sure to add that another one is applying it to a formula so let me show you what I got here let's get rid of this scale um, let's go back to what I had before uh, okay yeah so that's basically what I had okay all right so I can use it in a kind of a different structure right let's say I have here um, maybe this time I don't want to do it by color instead I want to use it to control the way a formula actually behaves right so I've got profit here and what I've done is I've created another parameter which is just a percentage right so in this case um, a percentage with the way you display in a flow is from zero to one right so basically a decimal you know decimal form I guess you can call it and I've just applied a range so going from zero to one as my minimum and maximum and every time I click this little ticker here on the right it goes up by five percent so 0 0.05 right and then I did where's my profit scaled I think it's this one right I just did the profit which is what I'm displaying multiplied by the scale and actually this should be sum of profit because that's the way we've done our visualization go okay so let's set this first to one percent uh, sorry a hundred percent which means if I bring in this profit scaled they should be exactly the same value which they are great right and as I reduce this you can see this one on the right getting less and less so you can actually use it to control your formulation right you can go even a bit further so let's say I have instead of that I've got category oops let's say I got a category like this right right now I'm applying a scale that is the same for every single one but you can actually do a different scale for each one right simply by going um, if we go hang on my alarm just went off for um, some food I am cooking so if I go into profit scaled right instead of applying the same one straight away I can actually go if Right, this is just exactly if category is equal to what do we got here furniture oh right furniture then do sum of profit times the scale right else for everything else I want you to do right um, plus 0 0.05 so we're gonna add a little bit extra percentage in there okay and we're gonna close it off all right and what have I done wrong all right because I've got aggregate and non-aggregate um, for this explanation it really doesn't matter because I'm just trying to demonstrate how you can switch from one to the other so let's get rid of this sum that should work okay all right let's go back to profit scaled all right so if we do this they will now get a different um, formula applied to whichever group so you can make this as intricate as you want right you see how they're all changing you can make it as intricate as you like right this one is a little bit more complex okay so let me show you what it's trying to do so if I have order date right, and I've got week I want to display three things so let's say I want to display profit quantity and sales right that, that takes up quite a bit of room okay I could put them all on the same one I could do some sort of measure or something like that but it gets messy and then also if these aren't all in the same axis I don't really want to do that instead I want to be able to display just one at a time based on my choosing 
Okay, so the way I can do that is by introducing a parameter, but instead of a parameter in terms of a formula, we can use it as a switch, right? So let me show you how you do that. Let's get rid of this. Okay, I've created this, um, hang on, where is it? Here, profit, quantity, and sales parameter. Okay, what I've done is I, switch, I switched it to string, right? The current, uh, and then maybe I'll do a fresh one so you can see how it works. Create parameter. Right, so I'm going to switch this to string, right? The and then we're going to go list. So from the list, we're going to actually reference anything that we want in here. So let's say for the one we did, we said profit, right? We want quantity, right? And sales, okay? And we go okay. So in here, if I come in here, you can only have three values. You can add more or less if you want, okay? So that's step number one. And then we have to create this formula, which is, I'm trying to remember what the formula is called, a measure switch, right? And basically what this does is, depending on what you've set for your parameter here, it will switch whatever the output for this is to the measure that you're referring to, okay? So let's say I switch this to profit, it will switch the measure to all the profit values from quantity to quantity, and then the third one is sales. But let's do it this way. So it's clean, right? And I'll show you how to add to this if you want to, all right? And then we'll just go else null, all right? And go okay. So what's gonna happen is if I put in, let's say, maybe we can put all of them so you can see how it does it. Uh, sales, profit quantity there. And then we'll bring in this um, measure switch. All right, so you can see that Right now, it's set to, uh, so sorry, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. Where's bah, 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 bah. a hide card? It's supposed to be this one. So show parameter. Right now, it's set to sales. So you can see these two are the same. I can actually switch this to quantity. And you can see this bottom one now switching to the quantity one and profit, right? Which is the very top one. Let's say I wanted to add a fourth one. Well, that's very easy. Let's say I wanted to see profit ratio as well. I can go back in here, type in profit ratio, go OK. All right, so now profit ratio is a, a, a option here. But if I switch it to profit ratio, nothing happens. Why? Because you've got to make sure that you've also modified this formula. All right, so all we do is we add another one like that. We go profit ratio and profit ratio. Okay. Oh, hang on. What did I do? Uh, I missed something in the formula. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, else if cannot mix aggregate and non-aggregate. All right. I just noticed the reason you can't use profit ratio is because it's an actual formula. So the formula is doing something. So that was just simply a bad example on my part. So, but that's how you would switch it if you were going to add another kind of field right? If you're referencing something that has a formula, it, there are cases like this one where the formula has something, is doing something that can conflict with the way the formula works here, right? So I'm not going to get into that too much, but that's simply how you add it, right? Okay, the last one we're going to do is bins, right? So if you've never done bins before, basically bins just help us group a measure, okay? So let me do an example. Let's say I've got... Um, heaps of products, right? I've got all these products, right? And let's see what the prices are for each of them. Let's put it as a visualization, right? Okay, so you can see I've got heaps and heaps and heaps in this list. So in terms of a visualization, scrolling is never a good thing, right? So instead, what we want to be able to do is group them. So I want to see how many products do we have between, you know, a certain amount and then the next group and then the next group. Okay, and what that allows me to do is, basically we're gonna build a histogram. We're gonna say how many products range between this amount of sales, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna to go to sales, create bins, right? And we can just do the suggested bin size, right? For the moment, so we go okay, right? So we bring in sales bin, you can see that there's all the um, grouping. So it's it starts from 0 to 175 and then 175 to 350 and it increases by 175 each time. Now we want to count how many products 
sell in those ranges. So I can actually bring product name in, count the number of products. Maybe we'll switch it this way, right? So I can see that there are almost 7,000 different products that sell between zero and 175 pounds, right? But one thing I don't like about this is you can see that it's either too granular, you know, there's too many groups or there's too little, depends on the bin size you've chosen, right? So if I come back in here and I go edit, let's say I want a, a bigger bin size, let's say 500, I go, oh yeah, that's that's all right. But again, I want to give the option to the to the person looking at it or reading it to be able to adjust it themselves. So what I can do is I can create another parameter, right? Um, let's call this bin control. And I want to make this, so it's, we had what, 175. Let's set it for every 200 pounds, right? So let's start with 200. I want to go range. So starting at 200 all the way up to, let's say 2000 in step sizes of a of 100, right? Or maybe we'll make this 100 then, right? So every time we click it, it goes up by 100, right? So we now got a bin control. And for the sales bin, which is this one, let's go edit. And instead of just typing a value in, we can switch this to parameter, right? So bin control, go OK. And if we add this as a parameter, like as a view, we can actually control how it actually groups the information. So again, another application of parameters. This this isn't all of them. There's heaps of things I've seen done with parameters. But if you're interested or you have a particular application you want me to do, leave a comment and I'll get to it. And yeah, we'll have some fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time.